The Syntax of Things by Arisha. Chapter 16, Wisdom. Poise. Harry looked over at the desk. The summer was an awfully rainy one. The trickling noise of the rain was interrupted only by the regular refilling of Snape's glass. It occurred to Harry that Snape had almost finished a bottle tonight, but he kept correcting essays nonetheless. As usual, Harry was occupying the sofa, reading what seemed to be the most boring book in the world. He heard a groan and saw Snape rub his eyes keenly with two fingers. Harry realized that he hadn't seen him leave the desk since the end of their occlumency practice that evening. Snape blinked his tiredness away and gulped another mouthful of alcohol. He corrected another page before taking a deep breath and shutting his eyes. "'Are you all right?' Harry asked. "'I'm tired of correcting nonsense.' He looked so desperate that Harry almost pitied him. So jazz. Step five, Snape read. I added powdered unicorn horn and waited for the potion to turn pink. When it didn't, he hissed, I added pink ink. The potion turned pink. Harry snorted. Who wrote that? It would be unprofessional of me to say. It would. Harry waited. Snape glared. And then he sighed. A first-year, muggle-born. Well, it makes sense, then. I wouldn't expect a better response from you. And now Snape was rubbing his eyes again. Take a rest. What for? You're tired. Snape nodded and refilled his glass, rubbing his face. He got up and stalked towards the sofa, feeling for the wall as if he thought it might escape him unless he kept in touch with it. His armchair escaped him indeed, and he almost collapsed onto Harry as he tripped over his feet. Fuck, Potter. Sorry. He landed next to him on the sofa with a grunt. His hair brushed Harry's shoulder lightly. You're pissed, Harry said. One should always be pissed, Snape murmured as he rested his head back on the cushions and slid lower. Harry thought of shifting away, but he was already trapped at the corner of the sofa. In the dim light of the room, Snape's hand was twitching weakly around the glass resting on his thigh. His eyes were half-closed, his features relaxed in a state that Harry had never seen before, and his body was emitting a strange warmth. Some students are doomed to remain empty-headed their whole lives, you know. No offense, Snape said. Harry adjusted himself slightly. Whatever, he murmured back. He really wanted to avoid a fight right now. Snape rubbed his neck and winced, baring his teeth as he grunted. Fuck. This was the exact moment Harry should go upstairs without thinking twice about it. Maybe, perhaps if he just left Snape here and went to sleep. You have a headache? Harry asked, although he already knew the answer. Snape hummed, either in agreement or disagreement, Harry couldn't tell. The minutes passed in silence. Harry waited, counting Snape's breaths, wondering whether he was asleep yet or not, staring at his own knees, squeezed in the sofa's corner, not daring, not allowing himself to turn and look at Snape. With his eyes closed, Snape brought his hand up to his neck again, exhaling sharply. Harry finally looked at him. There was a moment of hesitation, and then a sequence of entirely irrational and absolutely inappropriate thoughts consumed him. Without knowing why or what for, Harry softly pushed Snape's arm down and placed his own hand on Snape's neck. It occurred to him that Snape was attempting a frown, but his face was too sleepy to wear it properly. Unsurely, Harry pushed Snape's hair aside. His heart was about to explode. His fingers slipped lower, and he rubbed Snape's nape slowly. Part of him wanted to convince himself that what he was doing was a mere favor to the most miserable man alive. Another part of himself was having an epiphany. He'd regret this tomorrow. He'd be disgusted. He was aware of Snape holding his breath. What are you doing? He murmured. Nothing, Harry said. Snape exhaled sharply again and shut his eyes tightly, his lips slightly parting. It occurred to Harry that it was highly unlikely that anyone had ever done this to him before. And for a good reason, too, probably. He continued out of curiosity, unsure of why Snape hadn't stopped him yet. Thrilled that a Hogwarts professor could actually exist outside school, terrified at the pulsating skin against his fingers. Severus Snape had a heart. Maybe he just pitied Snape when he didn't wholeheartedly hate him. Under the subsiding rain outside, the sound of a soft moan at the back of Snape's throat 
was almost completely shattered. Unbelievable, Snape murmured, and Harry was curious to know what was unbelievable. Still, he couldn't bring himself to ask, afraid that if Snape opened his eyes, the moment would fade away and he would have to face his inappropriate action. He didn't talk. Instead, his movements soothed down and eventually stopped his hand retreating as the dark hair fell once again on the shoulders beneath it. Harry took the glass from Snape and placed it on the table as Snape's hand faintly attempted to curl around thin air. He should go now. Go before he did anything that would lead to his early painful death. He smiled to himself for a moment and then looked back at Snape, who was now sleeping with his head fallen back. Frustrated with himself, Harry eventually went to his room. "'I can do this all night,' Severus informed him. The boy grunted, biting his own tongue as he looked up. "'Then do so. I quit.' He was about to throw his wand on the sofa when Severus raised his own again. "'Not in my lesson, Potter. Well, stop it. Try harder. I am trying.' Potter kicked the carpet in vexation. He was trying, and he was failing. And no matter how hard they both insisted on avoiding this, Potter would always collapse defeated in the end. It was a simple thing, really. Potter was just incapable of sealing his mind. Your efforts are not nearly enough to contrive success. You keep using the same way to block me every day, while instead you could be experimenting until the way that fits you best finally occurs. You think I didn't try that? I tried fucking everything. It's just not working no matter what I do. I could shove my head into a block of cement and my thoughts would still fly away. He barely resembled James when he was like this, drenched in sweat, his lips trembling from a disappointment he was trying to force into obstinate anger. Hair damp and stuck on his forehead, shirt damp too, and chest heaving as though all the air of this world had been sucked into him and now was desperately kicking for its escape. Language, Potter. Screw language. And disappointment it was, always, for being ridiculed in front of Severus. If you enjoy being on your knees while I do this, I will not object. Training is not over, though. Prepare yourself. Potter stumbled up quickly, head strong, always. Tomorrow. Now, Potter. I can't. Deep breath. Lie. He needed a lie. It hovered inside his throat with the muir for a second. I saw improvement. And Potter's eyes lit up green and alive, sparkling green. You did? Yes. Potter squeezed his wand, keeping his back turned at Severus for a moment. Severus thought that the boy must have been smiling to himself or frowning. Then he turned. I'm ready. Do it. Severus smiled too. Legilimens. Now that was better.